All right, so today we're going to be experimenting with how matches light off in a vacuum chamber. So matches, when, um, when they're lit, are a chemical reaction between the oxidizer and the match head, which is usually something like potassium chlorate, and the fuel, which is usually, usually some kind of sulfur compound. Um, and so when you strike the match on the matchbox, there is heat generated and that heat is what starts to decompose the potassium chlorate into potassium chloride and then it gives off oxygen. Um, that oxygen then reacts with the sulfur compounds and that's what actually allows the ignition of the match head which then lights off the wood. Um, and so because the oxidizer is self-contained, you don't necessarily have to have an oxygen-rich environment to light a match. However, depending on external pressure, um, the ability of that oxidizer to successfully maintain combustion of the fuel in the match head, that can be affected. Um, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to be lighting off a total of um, 11 match heads where each one we're going to be stepping down the pressure by about 0.1 atmospheres. Um, and we're going to see like when you can't light a match anymore. Uh, to light the match, I'm going to be using this, which is a laser. Um, it is about a one watt laser and of course it's handheld and I'm going to be able to shine it through the acrylic which will then heat up the match head and cause it to ignite. I'm going to be wearing safety glasses just so that if I catch a stray reflection of the laser it's not going to blind me. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's light it off. Just got to put in the passcode. Okay, you can see the laser pointer now. So here we go, one atmosphere. Point nine atmospheres. Point eight atmospheres. Point seven atmospheres. Point six atmospheres. You can see the smoke is starting to fall a lot easier and that's because of the reduced buoyancy due to the reduced air density in the chamber. Okay, so now we're at about 0.5 atmospheres uh, or half the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Uh, this is something you'd find at the top of a really tall mountain here in the US, um, like maybe Mount Whitney or Pikes Peak. or some of the higher mountains in the Alps.
Okay, now we're at about 0.4 atmospheres, which is um, similar to the pressure at maybe 21 or 22,000 feet. So um, the highest mountain in North America, which would be Denali at 20,000 feet. You can see it lights, but there's no flame. It gently goes around the match head, um, but it doesn't produce a full flame. So maybe you'll have trouble lighting off a fire with one of these matches at 22,000 feet. That's not to say you can't have fire at 22,000 feet. That's just to say that this, this exact type of match wouldn't necessarily work that high. Okay, so now we're at 0.3 atmospheres absolute pressure, which is similar to the pressure on the outside of an airplane at cruising altitude, or similar to the pressure that you find at the top of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. Looks like a similar effect to what we saw at 0.4 atmospheres. You can see the, the ignition travels around the match head, but there's no flame. So I would not trust these matches to work any higher than maybe 14 or 15,000 feet. Reliably, that is. Okay, so now we're at 0.2 atmospheres of absolute pressure. This is about the pressure you'd find outside of the highest altitude commercial airplanes. Um, it's around 40,000 feet. And this is also the highest you can theoretically fly an airplane while on supplemental oxygen at ambient pressure. Um, if you go higher, you have to be in a pressurized cabin or in a pressurized suit. Looks like a similar effect to the last three, maybe a bit slower. Again, the ignition wave travels around the match head, but um, it, I think it was actually considerably slower this time. It's also producing a lot more smoke because there's a lot more inefficient combustion, and smoke is just unburned fuel particles. Okay, now we're at only 0.1 atmospheres, or about 1.5 pounds per square inch. Um, this is about the pressure that would be at 55,000 feet in altitude, um, which is just shy of the highest commercial airplane ever, which was the Concorde, that um, flew at about 60,000 feet. Looks like the, the match did not fully ignite, only a small portion. Let's try that again. So the uh, the ignition does not fully envelop the match head anymore. It's just a small portion wherever the laser shines that it looks like it bubbles um, and then it forms this white frothy compound on the match head, but then it just stops and it produces a bit of smoke, but the whole match head doesn't ignite anymore.
Okay, so now we're at 0.005 bar. Um, it's very, very low. It's only 0.5% of atmospheric pressure, and um, it's similar to the pressure you'd find at the highest high altitude balloons. So those things usually go up to between 100 and 120,000 feet. Um, Felix Baumgartner, um, when he jumped out of that balloon um, from you know the edge of space, that was at about 120,000 feet. So this is this is the kind of atmosphere that's in this chamber right now. So here's the last match. This is as low as we can go on this vacuum pump. doesn't even light. Let's try it from maybe a different angle. Not even a chance. And you can see the smoke falls back down pretty fast. Kind of wants to stick to the bottom, and that's just because there's absolutely no buoyant forces that are keeping it up. There's almost no air in this chamber.